so uh, good evening to all of you okay so whenever uh, talks of this this nature comes you know we we always feel that there is a problem like i asked uh, some parents um, do you know about this talk that is there i didn't tell that i'm uh, i am giving the talk and that parent said no problem with my teenager i said fine so very good so after a few uh, parents told me this like you know i don't have any problem with the teenager then i said that so the ones who are coming are having a problem right <laughs> huh so is there a problem all right okay because uh, when i when i saw the topic and when i saw the the side points of the topic i found it totally like you know a different type of a, a very very diverse kind of a, uh, topics which were clashing with each other we are talking about build your uh, teenager and then finally we speak about emotions and all that that's too vast i teach child psychology i teach adolescent psychology and i and when um, when students as teenagers they are fuming trying to tell me that my parents are not understanding me i tell them one thing i said to them that the day you were born they became parents so they don't have a degree in parenting so hold on so today let's see what are we considering our teenagers to be because that is very important how we are going to approach this topic because if you think that your teenager is a problem you are going to miss on life okay you are going to miss on life and i would not want families to miss on life trying to treat an a teenager as if your own child is a sick person in the house you will find a lot of clashes and all and that's why what i did in this presentation and what i'm going to talk to you is about understanding the teenager because that is very important today especially today understanding a teenager teenager cannot be put in a box you can't say that uh, as a teen you need to be this way this way this way because the exploration that takes place during the teenager time is something that will never come to our generation because we have crossed in a different box and they are totally exposed to a total different life so i would say to build up i i'll get this off to build up your teenager let's talk about this so what i would like to have the approach that i would like to have and i would like to inculcate that in you also is a very positive outlook so get off from this thing of this idea that my teenager has got a problem difficult no ha huh? right okay so let's learn something about teenagers right so now we come to the age of change there are these changes that are happening in a teenager that first of all the teenager himself is confused at what is happening around and these changes are always happening throughout life throughout life when you talk about teenager as a problem there is a counter question that is there which part of life is not a problem childhood is not a problem old age is not a problem mid life is not a problem every age comes with its problems but we cannot look at life as a problem but life has to be understood as a celebration and the celebration of these three things that are happening in every person at every point of time and that affects more our teenagers so the first set of changes that are taking place are the physiological changes 
so a person the teenager is going through a blast of changes in the body all right and these changes are taking place when the child can question what is happening to me what is all this that is happening to me as a child a little one cannot question you saw the child uh, crawling right you saw the child falling on the on the other side you you saw the child crawling you saw the child trying to hold a chair and get up stand up perhaps that chair could be your leg okay try to stand up the child could never say what is this happening to me because the language is not yet developed now the child is is questioning and that's good the child is is questioning as to what is happening to me so so many physiological changes <coughs> and when we talk about physiological changes it is not just what you can see physiological changes is the entire hormonal changes that are taking place something was, that was never experienced by your teenager before as soon as puberty hits gets in we have every change that is taking place and if you thought that as a child you could control the child with even with their emotions it doesn't happen at this time so what approach we can take that we are going to speak but right now let us try to understand and accept that physiological changes are taking place the whole body is changing to be a not yet adult and not a child anymore not yet an adult and not a child anymore so that's the change that the teenager is fighting with the second is the cognitive changes the brain is getting developed not yet developed that is why many of the things which you as a as a developed brain is saying the child cannot process the child cannot process the teenager cannot process consequences that is why you are trying to tell them don't do this don't do this and the child is retaliating why not i will try correct is it making sense okay so cognitive changes the thinking pattern the reasoning the understanding is is taking place over here cognitive changes and the third one is socio emotional changes as a teenager the child is not only exposed to you the child is exposed to so many people and so many other parents trying to the child is keeping on you know uh, comparing what their parents are doing how their parents are tackling the same issue that i am having so socio emotional changes so social changes are taking place and emotional changes are taking place so many upheavals and in this you have your teenager and that is why a very uh, renowned psychologist whose name was stanley hall called the phase of adolescence or teenager as a storm and stress phase of life got it understood so the storm and stress that means there's so much that they are going through that you cannot understand the cyclone within them they want to tell you things that you uh, uh, that you may not even be able to to understand and grasp and uh, and give answers to so teenagers are the ones like you know they retaliate because they cannot understand what is going on this understanding you will get see today you will realize how many back answers you gave to your parents right or wrong okay so today when the when they are in turn giving you so try to understand this 
so i am trying to present to you what a teenager is the judgment i am not going to give judgment is up to you so now let us see what is happening to the to the teenager what is their plan of action how are they planning their life what are all those things that are coming and these are the things that i have picked up all these days when i was talking to teenagers what is it that you are doing and i will i have uh, summed up or i have put down a few points that teenagers are grappling with what are they doing they are adjusting to changes they are adjusting to changes there are so many changes that are taking place within the body you know how difficult it is for a girl and a boy to understand the physical changes in the body for us it is very easy because it comes as a text okay at this age this happens at that age that happens but they are going through that entire change in the body it is stressful for them kit zal tari no zahid zata so that is the point that there is a lot that is happening within the body and the child is trying to adjust to the new changes that are taking place the first thing is adjusting to changes the child suddenly gets a chance to make decisions suddenly there is a point where uh, where people are asking you what do you want to take as a subject for you right teenagers yes a lot of decisions who are my friends with whom will i roam around what is the uh, like you know the whole uh, social compass is now redirected by you by the child alone before what is to happen you would take your child and keep them you play with these people enough sargan now they are choosing they are making their decisions so you put them in first standard and all the subjects that were there in first standard to 8 9 10 they took without any questions right afterwards they were why arts why science why should i do just because my mother did not become a doctor why should i be a doctor they are making decisions they are questioning okay then academics there is so much that is happening in the academics at this time see and remember this ha huh? all these are these things are happening when there are still hormonal changes that are taking place so they will get cranky they will uh, they will do lot of things even to the point of suicide they will do lot of things extreme will be suicide but let's not get there let's so i will give you an approach to look at at adolescence okay so academics so much so many changes are taking place within within the within the child's purview as far as academics is concerned like today our teenagers at st xavier's college they are, they are battling it out because they are not getting the subject that they want the parent is telling the child aso kor tu but the but the child today is turning to their parent and saying tu kor because that is not what i want to do in life it's a very important decision like there are uh, there are uh, students right now who are changing colleges because they are not getting english and the parent is saying you take political science but i want to be an english teacher with political science i cannot pursue so it looks like a very easy thing for us when we say that okay okay do it but for them it is a cry it's a crashing of their dream and that is very important we have to understand from their and it's very difficult for us to understand huh? their perspective to understand that's why i will give you an approach so academics there are relationships different people they are meeting as they go out as teens and what is happening is that they are exchanging so many views they are enjoying sometimes they are enjoying the friends more than you and that kids us huh 
worst and most of the time and worst is this for child psychology i use this you know i use this uh, 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 this example i tell them see when you were a child there is a something called an adjustment that happens the, sorry the adaptation or attachment that happens so i tell i tell my students i tell them see when you were a child you were crying when the parent would go out remember what natak you had to do when if you had to go to the doctor if you had to go to the market remember the so much of hangama like that child would do cry and all tantrums and all no mama is going but dada is going i tell them now at your age when you see your parents at home you start crying when please go somewhere either you go i'll i'll go out but these are changes that are happening because of these relationships suddenly they find comfort and there is nothing wrong in that if they find comfort in friends and if they can adjust their their turmoils and their stresses with with friends or with some person who they would consider as a mentor why should parents be abus should not be what is the influence are wrong right. yeah is not, not correct we will come to this because this is the negative part of it which we need to you know we need to uh, we need to feed them with this with the choices which they make and the and the problems that occur is with this with the choices that they make which you don't like because you know that the outcome of this choice that they are making because you already have your frontal cortex already of the brain already formed you can understand the consequences they cannot understand and that is why you try to you know tell the child okay this is not right not right not right not right why because you have understood it the child has not understood it that's why we are trying to understand the mind of the child okay so relationships then there are peers suddenly there are these friends who become most important in life the teachers also even in the childhood uh, there were lot of things which you would tell and one thing the uh, the teacher tells them and that becomes the most important thing teacher told me to write this this way or teacher told me to put the uh, paper in the in the dustbin and you as a parent will say are baba i was telling you the same thing got it so peers once again coming to the peers the friends become very important and we have all gone through this stage we have all gone through this stage where parents suddenly assumed a lot of importance okay i'll tell you what uh, what what one child today told me right in my room in front of the of uh, of uh, her parent he says she, uh, she told me that you know i have to be very cool in front of my peers and very good in front of my parents did you understand this the whole battle and that's why i i told i told that child also and being cool in front of peers and being good in front of parents sometimes is a big journey for them quite a big journey but what is important we will get to that so i would like the session to end with this how do we act on it first let us just understand the problem okay so the parents then there is career what do i do third years don't know what they need to do they have crossed their teenagers still they don't know what to do they are scared about it children right from their teens are building up their dreams sometimes the dream could be something that is really it like mind blowing one of my relatives i was trying to tell you know i was trying to tell that uh, that your child doesn't want to do that 9 to 5 job and the parent was hell bent no government job 9 to 5 job okay that uh, office thing 
and I was trying to tell this one, this one is thinking different. So around 10 years back, around 10, 12 years back, I, I was trying to tell the mother, today the child has gone so ahead that he was once working with Google and he changed, when you type Google, you get those different caricatures. He did it. This boy, which the mother did not understand. And I'll tell you, the child that is there you know, in your house is an atom bomb. They can do anything. They are a blast of ideas. The problem is that we can't understand to the extent to which they can, they can grapple. Because the entire market is what they are experiencing. The world that they are experiencing, not a world that we have experienced. And there lies the problem with the parent-child relationship. And remember one thing, the teenagers who are there in your house, no? Never think that they are not going to have problems when they become parents with their teenagers. And salutes. That's the norm of life. Always. Okay? So, career, health, personality, sexuality and orientation. Here I would like to uh, say something very important over here. And now things are, are getting a little more and more open and uh, I don't know whether it is open or close, closure of mind, but there is this that is happening. We can't stop this. They become like horses, like bulls. They want to explore their sexuality. They want to tell you what they are attracted to. You will dare not listen to that. You will uh, like kind of, you know, you, you will dare to hear that. But this is happening to them because they are meeting people who are of various orientations. Okay, so this is the this is the reality. Now, how do we respond to this? How do we respond to this? How do you respond to your teen? Let's take a few pointers, and then I will get into a discussion with you. Okay, first. Whenever a, par a parent, as a parent, you approach your child and the child says something to you, please don't take it personally. The problem is that we take everything to our heart. Try to understand all that they are going through and think of it as maybe an explosion of Uzani Konegadla, Elani Tujibogale on Futlo. Try to understand how much they are going through. Like you remember the story of that, uh, of the, of the boss. Uh, sorry, of a boss who um, shouted at the at the employee. <laughs> okay, yeah. The employee comes home, shouts at his wife. The wife shouts at the elder one. The elder one shouts at the younger one. And the younger one, who to shout at, goes and kicks the dog. Now what the dog has to do with what the boss said? But the dog will not sit and think, you know, what the boss said. Nor will the, will the, will the child start sit and thinking, like, you know, what, what, is the, what is this that is happening? In the same way, sometimes we may also not understand what, where the explosion has taken place. It is just, it has erupted. Oh, where the explosion has been initiated. It has erupted in front of you. And sometimes, you know, to all their frustrations, they want to bring it out on the most significant person of their life. And many times that is parent. Okay, there's a, there's a psychological uh, kind of a, this thing, intervention here, which I would like to tell you is that whenever in a group, okay, um, something happens, anything, like, you know, a person like I, for example, I make uh, a very important point. 
a very important point. Or I feel really ashamed. Somebody puts me into shame. Okay? At that moment, I will look into a crowd, I will look at one person into this crowd. Any person. Not, not here, huh? I'm, I'm just telling you. They will look at the person who is the most significant person in their life. Has that person seen it? For approval or for comfort. Okay? So sometimes they will come and erupt in front of you. And that is the time that you need to understand. Okay? We'll come to that. So don't take it personally. Don't say, don't go into depression saying that my child, has so many things I did for my child and all, and today this child is doing this for me. Don't take it personally. If the child is going through a problem, it is his problem, not yours. Then you will say, don't take too much of, what I, my point over here is that, don't try to take too much of control over everything that is happening. You can't control yourself sometimes. You will, uh, don't think that you will be able to control a child. Very difficult. And when it is a teenager, no. They will like, you know those, uh, those, those huge dogs who will take you with the chain? They are like that. Okay? So try to understand that that child can have problems. That child can have an explosion in their life. Okay? So don't take it personally. And the more you take personally, you know what is going to happen? If you take it personally, will the child get diabetes? You will get diabetes. Got it? So you will have problems. Not the child. The child exploded and he mended himself and Got it? Okay? So don't take it personally. First thing, nacha them, don't nag them. So good. One day a child just broke in front of me and she said, Father, never did I find a word coming from my, uh, my, my father which comforted me but you know I could just imagine like as soon as I enter my house something or the other you have not kept your clothes here properly and this and all and all that stuff never I am I am searching for a kind word from my father got it so your child is growing remember is not grown not an adult teen still a teen and why are they why are they uh, formed as a like you know they are in a kind of a phase of uh, of transition there are few uh, phases of transition and that this transition is one of the one of the most the greatest of all because it is happening this transition is happening in front of you who have gone through this transition and you are well settled in your way of thought Okay, so nurture them, don't nag them. All the time telling, you know, sometimes you even need to tell things in a different way. You need to speak to them. Okay, we'll come to that. At their worst, remember, they need you the most. When they feel bad, when they feel down, you must be most you should have this aim that my child when in trouble should come to me and nobody else if that happens it's the greatest thing but for that a lot of homework is there right from childhood it cannot start in teenager today you cannot go and say come on now i am for you <laughs> today this won't happen okay that's a it's a gradual process I'll tell you something that happened when we were in college. Um, I was in college and that time there was a situation that happened in, in a girl's life where a big blunder from the girl's side and uh, this child, we came to know, the friend circle, we came to know that, uh, that this happened. So teen, teenager, okay? So that time we were 17, 18 in our college time. So, 
so this happened and now we are waiting to meet this girl we are waiting to meet this girl we are waiting sokani begin gele college and we are waiting no patta of this one. so during recess she came she came ah okay then we spoke and then we were talking she was not talking anything and she was like sobbing and uh, you know this is like the worst thing and uh, and suddenly uh, she comes to know that the parents have come to know about it about this okay now uh, now the the child is saying i am not going home so we are trying to tell her where where will you go we want to stay uh, somewhere with another friend we will go and explain no 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 i will i will look into that and she she went off from college uh, at that point so other friends you know other friends what they did was they um went to their home saying that i hope the girl has returned home did not return home and uh, parents are all you know boiling with anger at the same time they are having a, a kind of an issue as to now what where is my child so and their house is like you know there's a long kind of a a, a pathway the gate so the girl comes at around 7 o'clock 7 7:30 quietly she comes at the gate and parents are there on the thing so they see, she sees her uh, her father all kind of you know fuming over there like pasai matalo in fathers we have that thing no like pasai mata dusra father okay so pasai matalo so the girl said you know the girl said i'm going to have it now so the mother came to the door uh, to the main door and returned gone back so she said now everything has happened now i'm going to have solid now at home so uh, what happened was now she is approaching the door she approaches the middle uh, the main door the father already enters in is inside so the father from nowhere comes and just locks the door so now just imagine that girl is like on the verge of saying that oh god now i'm going to have it they are going to finish my life right so the father held uh, the girl tight and cried okay big mistake huh, of life big mistake of life but the but the but the child uh, this thing is now looking what is happening so the mother is brought food and kept on the table come on now let's eat zale the zale no but that girl understood today she's a broad well settled in life but she she told us after that i understood where and which place is the place of my comfort whatever may happen they should turn to you because nobody in this entire world can understand your child better than the parent and then the second comes who siblings because they are also have seen you right through okay husband wife they will not understand so at their worst they need you the most and at that time don't exit don't get angry and uh, and you know you don't play your tantrums after that see there lies the problem when you start playing your tantrums tantrums over tantrums no at least one person should be sane no we always say in a in a marriage at least one person should understand okay let's make this thing happen again dogai ne lai lo uzo dale dale no both will go on different directions okay so at their worst they need you the most each teenager is different adjust your parenting style to suit do you know that there are parenting styles you must have googled this just to have a good time with your with your uh, child parenting styles you know never never gone through authoritative authoritarian okay authoritarian i tell you nothing else authoritative i explain things and i expect responsibility for the child from the child laissez faire pe- uh, permissive allow whatever the child does 
but today science says that none of the parenting styles are wrong different child or different child requires a different form of parenting so a lot of work from you also as parents difficult no difficult okay so each teenager is different don't ask your neighbor what your how that person is doing and apply what you have done to the your teenage age and then uh, i do it on my child no no teenager two teenagers are the same so the application of what you are going to you know do to your teenager is completely different what other people have done to their teenagers it may work but worse it may backfire understood and when it backfires then you will say my god simply i i listen to him at least what you do you will be able to say my mistake but then the the entire uh, jargon of uh, of the uh, quarrel goes hey why by thinking like now what do i tell that parent who told me this solution okay so this parenting style should change there are various ways through which these but uh, but these parenting styles actually if you analyze all of you as parents no you will have different parenting styles authoritarian authoritative pessimist uh, permissive uh, then there is uh, what do you call it uh, laser fair different types learn i mean just go through and uh, and know about these things because with that you can you can really work with your family a lot as far as parenting is concerned let them have the last word we never do this we have the last word many times parents having the last word in a family you know is a is a crash down but how you should do it that's a way how to do it you you nurture the child in such a way that they say exactly the responsible way of which you think the child should go but get that answer from the child and then you will find that the child will go to any extent to realize the dream but if you tell that this is my dream and you have to do it this way i'll come finished so you think that comes from manipulation part manipul yes but uh, that manipulation is like you know you are not manipulating that person so you cannot uh, say that i want uh, this child to be a doctor so i want one i i do everything so that a child says that i am a doctor no that is not the what i have said what i am trying to say is that that's why you have to understand the capacity the capability the aptitude of the child and work from there you can't work from your mind you have to get it from their mind because remember that every child although they even have the same set of genes of you and your uh, other spouse right still the child is different okay because your grandfather also is working there your great grandfather i'm not talking about the physical huh? i'm not talking about physically the grandfather telling something genetic code remember dominant and recessive genes manta te asta dominant and recessive genes that means some you will say ani kona ye chad re don't ask this ask your parents how they were so sometimes your your uh, the thing no uh, your qualities or temperament mostly temperament may not be your temperament the child's temperament your child's temperament may not be your temperament neither your husband's temperament or wife's temperament it could be your grandfather's temperament because the genetic code goes in such a manner that it sleeps in one generation gets up in another generation that's why one of the uh, one of the greatest uh, this thing example of this is given by the color of the eyes sometimes parents don't have light colors it is grandmother's eyes that 
that come and then you say that who is this now? Then think about it. Ask, then you will understand. Okay? So this is all about dominant and recessive genes. This is a total physiological uh, this thing, um, talk that, that cannot be spoken over here. Let's uh, get back to this. Involve them in your household tasks. Don't make them as if it's a hotel and you are supposed to do everything for them. Involve them. Every household task, even closing the door, even they are responsible for that. Putting the whole house in order, not just your room, not, on, not only that person's bed, but also about everything. Everybody. Nobody should be considered as a teenager, should not be considered that, okay, Baba, you can go, you can do whatever you want. No. Everything will be provided. No way. So, involve them and get them work out the household tasks. Apologize when, it, when you get wrong. This is something that never happens. We will, because we have a mind, no? Our mind are matured. We will try to tell why and everything and all the thing. No, finally it's your fault. No, sometimes you will understand. Are you sorry? Mood sorry. Say it. It's okay. No problem. You don't have, your whole roof from your house doesn't go if you say sorry. But that, that uh, this thing, no? Sometimes the more mature, the more uh, uh, even uh, kind of positions that we have, it's very difficult for us to say a simple word like sorry. And that gives a lot of confidence to the child. Huh? Okay? And sorry, saying sorry is not your weakness. It is one of the greatest strengths. Okay? Apologize sometimes. So bend a little. Your uh, rules that your... My parents never allowed at 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock, Malayar Garan Bitor. You can't use this uh, rule. Sometimes you need to bend rules so that somebody can... Like, you know, there are different changes that are taking place. Be apt for this. But at, that, at the same time, like, you know, don't be so casual that, uh, that you say, no rules in my house. If they are in your house, rules are according to your house. Okay? So, but you need to sometimes bend a little for your, for your children. Okay? Like, uh, for example, there was a rule in the in a, in a house that nobody should uh, drive uh, bikes. And that was applied to children also. But that time that rule was applied because there were no bikes. It was just one bike. Now today we have a house is such that there would be four people with four bikes. So different times change. Okay? Give a little bend to your... Be a human resource manager. One of the very important thing is that as a parent, you have to make a lot of information available to the child. Like you are a manager of the child, but you are a manager not of, of, of any random people. He's your child, remember that. He's a flesh of a flesh. Okay? So, give a good naturance to this child. Give a, a, like, you know, even a, a purview of what the child can do. See, there, there was one mother who, was, who would always tell me, my child will never be able to do that. Huh? And I would say like, okay, do you really think? She would say, I know my child, no? The temperament, the mood, the way the child reacts and all. And that was true. Sometimes this guidance of yours is very important for the child. That is why you have to see how you can, how you can channelize your child into, into a resource. Make a resource of your child. See, how many of you all uh, during, uh, when they were children, have run after them for different activities, sports, from 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock, sports, then one tuition, then uh, school, after school again another tuition, then music, then uh, something else and something else. You were that human resource manager. 
So that child must have said at that time, No, Mama, I want to sleep. No, get up, come on now, go. But because you said that, you have a fine sportsman today in your house. You have a fine musician in your house. You have a fine dancer in your house. Because you have done, you have put a lot of your resources to make another human resource in your house. So make, be a human resource manager. As a parent, let them look up to you and say that, <coughs> okay, I want to, uh, like, you know, I will... I can rely on my mama, I can rely on my dada because they will make all, everything available, what? Information, so that the child decides, not you. What you want, Baba? Tell. Got it? Okay? So be a human resource management. Acknowledge their strengths. Acknowledge their strengths. Tell me something about the child. Whole list of negatives. Positive is it? Talk more about positives. It makes a huge difference, not, on, not only to the child's uh, this thing, but even you, you and you will start seeing the positive that even the child cannot understand about itself. And finally, the last thing is relate to them. In this relationship between a mother, a father and a teenager, in this relationship, the secret of, of blossoming that relationship is there in the word relationship itself. And that is relate to your child. Don't be a boss to your child. Don't be like, you know, that kind of a thing. I tell you, you have nothing to say. You have to do it. Relate to the child. And today, <coughs> children are longing for that comfort from you okay so with that uh, i'm done now i would like to hear from you it's seven we have 29 minutes to go seven one now we get into discussions what if negative influence now because now see you got the approach now I would tell you, apply the approach. How you will apply the approach? First of all, try to understand that they are, they are going through a lot. Okay? Just as they, you would also want to, them to understand what you are going through. Because every child, old person, middle age is going through a lot. You at your workplace, you are going through a lot. In the same way, the child also is going through a lot, but the child, the teenager is going through a lot, and the teenager is incapable of many a times deciding. The angelus, in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. The word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Sorry, behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. That we... Let us pray. For both we be such a Lord, thy grace, O heart, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, our Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by a special cross be brought to glory and resurrection through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the divine assistance always remain with us, and may the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. May God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit. So now let's get into discussion. Now let's talk about problems. But now when you are seeing a problem, no, try to assess what I have spoken. Huh? 
because many of the problems that that you have considered if you apply what i have said are no more problems yeah just for example yeah Uh, I'll tell you what approach uh, we have. I tell the child, go to any place in the whole world where you will get this subject. Some are stuck to the college. Nothing like that. If you want something, go get it. And you should see how the children get it. They are fighters. You get scared. What the child will eat? What the child? Oh my God! The bus and all that. Thank up for on the song na. What they want, they want, and they will get it. So that with that approach, you know, because you need to understand that the child that's in your house, I told you, is an atom bomb. You never know the intensity with which he can. I'm not talking about exploding, but I'm talking about. the intensity with which the child can achieve is beyond our understanding and we have to give that benefit to the child more they are how do you say that us is a good is yeah but we can see they are yeah Yeah. Yeah. Um, the group that you prefer, they will not get into it. That's the that's the difficult part of it. Did you not have friends who were you would never uh, introduce to your parents? No. Aun mujhe sangta. My parents would be shocked if I had to tell these are my friends. So I would keep them in college. Thank God we did not have mobile that time. Otherwise, they would. Today, their friends from college are not only in the college; they are in your homes also, through the mobile. They will say good night to you, and under the bed sheet. Yeah. So that cannot be stopped. But we had a good time, like you know, when we said bye to a person, to a friend, it was really bye. But today, a little difficult. so uh coming to one very important point that you made how does how to make uh, now i may require this how to make the child understand or your anxiety that a child may go into a wrong thing how do you nurture that that is what is important in what you have said over here and what i would say is that you cannot start uh training a teenager during teenage that choice has to be there right from birth which okay? as they are growing you have to keep telling them this you know how a mother prepares the girl for puberty how a father Actually, father never prepares, no. <laughs> yeah, but especially a mother, because I know when we talk about adolescence, we really open up, and you know, in front of boys and all, they are ready to speak about how their mother prepared them for that, for the puberty and for relationships, everything. It is. It cannot be start. It cannot. You cannot start. You can't start a revolution today, huh? They will leave your homes today. Eyes kaim and na kai gara ko asan mujhe trasan ma ka trasan gal sir. And don't tell who gave this talk. Okay, so uh, it has to be right from early childhood, where they know. You know, I find it best when parents say that I know what my child is going to choose in life. given the chance of of choices between good and bad i know that the child 
will always search for good but hardly parents can claim this and i tell parents you don't know your child and i uh, came to this conclusion that you don't know your child on my own life where my parents did not know me padri salam okay so what the child does that's why privacy of a child is another issue which i did not want to speak about but what i wanted to speak about over here is uh, father mervin this could be another topic the privacy of a child very important to give the child privacy okay because the child is growing the child needs to be alone because what is the turmoil that is going on in the mind of the child uh, sometimes they need to settle it within themselves only need be they need to speak it out so the your anxiety should be blessed with what you have already thought them ani tej mukarane asna kai when will you live your life हेलो घर पावले आई एम गेटिंग डिफरेंट अरोमास बिरयानी आर दे गिविंग वन वन बिरयानी टू ऑल ऑफ यू Yeah, but they are staying in your house, no? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's why, no, this point of responsibility is you have to understand one thing that whatever you may tell them, they are not understanding it because their brain is not yet formed. 22 23 24 that is the time that the brain is now solidified you got it so they are not even don't take things like you know they will say a lot of things to you why i was born to you and all that how a father gena ga try to understand you know that this is not what they mean they don't know to say what they mean and this you have to understand otherwise Diabetes, who will get heart attacks and all? Ah, uh, children won't get. You will get. So survive, survive all these arrows that will come. But you know, uh, children know that my parent does not like me staying late. They know. So that's why this goes in the education of the child right from beginning. so they should know what exactly my mama will like my mama won't like and there are, there is a nice thing about uh, parents discussing things with the child the day the child stops discussing you will come to know that there is something else cooking okay yeah anything else i will i will tell you one thing huh? i will tell all of you one thing nobody in the world has understood teenage okay because people who give talks you know sometimes big big teachers and all who give talks they can't handle their own teenager understood so very difficult so that's why i'm telling you celebrate life celebrate life because that's the key to your teenager i have a one question here yeah i'll get it yes i don't know if i agree with you about uh, the state that you made earlier about giving your teenager privacy i think the parent has to exercise tremendous uh, wisdom in giving their children mm-hmm. yeah yeah because uh, that privacy can because teenagers don't have the maturity that adults have 
exactly. The exactly. Context. See the maturity uh, or the privacy that I'm talking about is the time that you give the child to its own. I'm not talking about going inside the room and uh, locking himself and after three days the child will come out and say, hello mama, how are you? I'm not talking about dead privacy. The privacy that I'm talking about is a privacy with responsibility. Yeah, uh, that's what I read when you said it. No? Because uh, many times we are, we think that uh, you should not have privacy, I should look at all your chats. Today, husband, wives are having problems with that. What about you and your child? Okay, so that privacy, I don't know, we need to uh, look into this and debate this a little more. But privacy, yes, the child requires privacy. But responsible privacy. Okay, there should be, like I know a parents who, who who tell the children, see, you can't put, you can't put a, what do you call that? Lock. You can't put a lock on your phone. Okay? And that's fine. That's fine. And the moment they get a wrong message, no, they will delete it. You know why? Because they know it is wrong. The moment they delete it, that means you know that your child is on the, can at least understand that it is wrong. Okay, very delicate, huh? these, these topics are very delicate. Yes. Okay, so today, today this is like one, uh, uh, one thing that three years back we had the same question, but the approach would be different. Because now, every parent would say, no mobile for you. But two years back, every parent only gave the child a mobile and gave the best of internet facilities. Okay? Now we have to uh, visit this problem. What I would say is that your time for you, his time for himself, and friends also, certain time. So if you can devise this, because I uh, was uh, listening to chats, not chats, uh, a TEDx talk of a teenager. He says, Mama, you can't, you know, spend five hours on the phone and tell me not to use it for one hour. Understood? I don't know how valid that point is, but that's a point that they are making. Tum ko nahi? They will say. That is not a right thing also to be, that's not a good argument also, but but social media has to be curtailed because many times uh, there was one, 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 around five years back, there was one student who came to, uh, to us and Father Jerome was the principal at that time and uh, said to Father Jerome, I was also there, and he said that, uh, Father, we should organize uh, leftover food for the dogs. Next day, everybody brings everything uh, from home and we'll feed the dogs from the campus. Around 70 dogs are there on the campus, which nobody knows how they came there. Uh, so, it, so we asked the question, Baba, tell me what your parent ate for uh, breakfast. Today, your parent, your mama had breakfast, we asked them, you are thinking about dogs. She had no answer, she went back. He said, I'll feed my own dogs. Okay? So, social media, coming back to this point is, we need to, to tell the child that for what is social media? We still have to find an answer to this. And perhaps uh, over, uh, over some meetup of yours, you may be able to tackle this well. Because the moment it comes as rules, no, children don't like it. Especially teenagers. Once you put those, those boundaries, that's why I told you, sometimes you need to be a little flexible on certain boundaries. But you need to watch how the child uh, loves the company of others. 
okay and sometimes let them be if they are joyful with their friends it should not scratch you it should, you should not feel tickled you should be happy that my child is happy but your time is your time huh? the time that you need the child to have a family time that should not be away from that's why what we do even as a community of priests we have together we never take our mobile um, for meals when we are together we don't take our mobiles mobiles become landlines that time so they are ringing in our uh, thing at the end uh, anybody may say i was trying to contact you uh, for one and a half hour because our uh, half an hour prayer and one hour of our dinner becomes uh, like uh, time of uh, many people get uh, get a little hyper i want i was contacting you i said but that's what we are unavailable to other life we are available only to us so if a family time can can come in when we say that no mobile time could help could help was okay there was a ninth standard year a ninth standard girl who uh, went with uh, with dada for uh, for school the father dropped the girl and the girl got down did not go to the school went to the uh, to the uh, police station and complained my father has uh, confis- uh, has robbed my phone confiscated actually because exams are coming up and uh, the father gets a call from the police station happened na i won't tell you are going are sahib who said abroad <laughs> no you want here yeah, goa okay because these things are happening yeah so the the friends they have their own the morality you know yeah. rules like mostly more non catholic friends mm. very few catholic friends one or two catholic friends and not catholic uh-huh. so they yeah then then they become chota bhim suddenly okay i'll come to this what's the time how much time do i have 20 21 nine minutes more so coming to this point now there was one once uh, a third year student came up to a priest and told my friend is uh, pregnant which pill should i give my friend my classmate uh, which how do i clean up had the audacity to ask a priest because the priest was teaching criminal psychology and all this uh, thing so one blind person uh guiding the other so when i talk to the parents when uh, sorry when i talk to my class especially i tell them never consult what to do with your buddies because they are equally ignorant like you that's why i emphasize on having a mentor this mentor could be you also a parent could be a mentor but also it could be somebody who is out, outside also they have to have mentors otherwise sogle pole hoda but right now what is going on especially with the orientation that i have spoke about they are all uh, going towards a different uh, set of uh, rules and we should be scared about it huh? you have teenagers in your house so watch out one day they may bring those flags in your house multicolored and no okay no maje lgbt and lesbians uh, gay uh, bisexuals transsexuals transgender there are there is even a college in goa which has had a union for the for them 
Okay, these are these are problems. Yeah, yeah. My father tells me about this. We are clash of values when we yeah. are in the sixties. Our parents taught us how to be kissing that. Yeah, sense. yeah. The bigger daughters taught it. Then was the generation gap. Now we are on the other side of the fence. That's the only difference. And uh, these two find me. That's why we need to understand this. What uh, what you are saying, Frederick. Yeah. These that think that we should do it was crazy, like. Mm. That's right. <laughs> Elvis Presley was like uh, Your generation Elvis Presley, my generation Beatles. Beatles, yeah. Guns and Roses, my <laughs> orientation, yeah. Is there also a place that it could be not just environment that is conducive to that type of thing today? It could also be generally to biology of their own. It could be. It could be, because it's hormonal, no? Yeah. No. 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 Yeah. But the problem lies when people are psychologically affected by this problem. Otherwise, it's not a problem. It's somebody's orientation, and it's fine. Yeah, but clash between this. So, so but but these are also highly sexualized times in yeah. that sense. Yeah. Like when we grew up, we didn't come across that many images. Hmm. Today you cannot open a mainstream newspaper without seeing, you know, sexual yeah. 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 That's a problem. It makes me mad. Yeah, it's like it's, it's everywhere. Today, watch uh, Netflix. We may feel that that's one of the best series, but what are the values that are within it is questionable. Yes. You will have to act it out. I say I just spoke to my friend, and poor thing, he is into watching all this pornography. How bad their parents must be feeling now. Just say that and go from there. See what happens to the child. Understood? Now you will put the child in a deep thought. Never ask directly a child. You are watching pornography, idiot. You don't have to say that. <laughs> Gently. You have to. It's called mirroring. These are various things, various ways, therapies in which you can talk to your child. It's mirroring, and it's not a lie. Huh? You don't have to tell this to the priest. I told one story like this just to bring something to notice. You know, of my child. It's not a. You have not harmed. You are trying to make things better for you as a parent. They are, this discussion can never get over. After your child crosses teenagers, you will think that I should have done something else. You will always find this. So that's why my point here is that the first slide. Do you remember? What is the first slide? No, no, the topic. The topic. Build your teenager. Build your teenager. So that as an adult, because the child is going through that transition, so as an adult, the child should not be ill-equipped with moral values, with your uh, family uh, values, with divine law, and with social law. Should not be ill-equipped. Don't be too busy in your life as to never meet the child. Then I ask. Why are you doing this for my child? But where's your child? Child is somewhere else, and you are somewhere else. When will you enjoy that? The today. When will you have the now? 
We are always thinking about for the future. I will do this. I will do that. Today, that's the point. And I think I am uh, out of time now because for the concluding remarks there will be some more time. And 7:30 because your teenagers must be looking at the watch and saying, "Where is my soup?" <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, or it could be. I hope they don't end in time, because right now they must be clearing things, even if there was uh, some kind of a mess that they were creating at home. Yeah. Ha ha ha. Exactly. Actually, every every present moment, no, is very important. Because uh, sometimes you may be in a position that your your children have enough of you. Let's give a little to the other society, and you just don't work only for money, no. There is something about you that you want. You want to express. You want to express your capability. You want to express uh, your uh, the dreams that you always had. So why not? You could. But many. I was just spoke to another parent uh, uh, who said that I stopped my. Uh, he had a a small. Uh, what do you call that? It's a, a super store. Okay, at a super store. Stop. Give it to somebody, and he said, uh, "I'm enjoying myself because there are so many more conversations that I'm having with my children. I'm enjoying that. Okay, I don't want to be judgmental on uh, work, whether you're working or not. Not nothing like that. But still, even if you're working, you can make time for your children. Yeah." Yes. See the decision of right and wrong, no. And what is happiness and what is pleasure? That comes along with you. And uh, and lot of students are today into drugs. Lot of students, and they don't even know that they are drugs. For them, it's a drink. For them, it's a small paper. Some just. Give them that dose. There were students who, were, if they had one lecture off, they would go for their round and come back, and you know they would look at you, and you could make out they are not looking at you. Got it? So challenges are there. Narcotics was not just a problem that time. Even today, today everybody is quite burgya sangleya burgya ni ani kiten kori th. There is a fear lurking into every parent as to what my child is going to do, and that is very scary. No? Are you as parents not scared about your children? Yeah. There is a lot of fear. That's why don't get threatened by your children. You will never get these teenagers back. You know this, no? Once the teenage is over, done. They are gone. they will go flying there was a youth who would come to me and i would ask him one question 
लोग क्लोरोमेंट क्यों खाते हैं यू डू नॉट अंडरस्टैंड नो डू नॉट अंडरस्टैंड आई वुड से लोग क्लोरोमेंट क्यों खाते हैं दैट वॉज द एड राइट या आई वुड से दैट टू हिम एंड ही वुड अंडरस्टैंड दैट आई अंडरस्टूड दैट ही स्मोक You need to be. Sometimes you don't have to tell them that you smoked. You just say something like this. They come to me. So that's it. Okay. I think it's time. Biryani time. Any more questions? No. I think so. They are wise. <laughs> no. Let me tell you my concluding remarks. don't think that you are going to master parenting it's an experience okay you may pass you may fail in your parenting but don't take it to heart you have struggled it be happy about it the life that you are spending with your children is a life that you will never have it again spend time with them and celebrate your child so today don't go, go and start kissing your child slowly okay so sagad you know try to bring in these changes that is what i wanted to tell you that build your teenager don't break them okay and never think that when you are arguing with your child and you win you never win in any argument for that matter if you win even between husband and wife in marriage i always tell this to married couples in the argument that you think you won you have lost it all that way and the same thing applies even to parents and children okay let them see the tremendous love in you and not a police person in you and see how they will come and confide in you Okay god bless you have a nice time